Hi guys. How's it, man? I hope everyone has been well. It is deep into summertime here. Crazy, crazy hot already. I got into my auto the other day and it was like 45 degrees. Whew. Man, so it's been a minute since we've talked. But I'm back for a good reason, obviously. You see the flag. You see the emblem. You know what happens in less than a week. The abridged version of the 2023 Rugby Championship cracks off with two games this weekend. I'm absolutely excited to see the boys back on the pitch and to support them and get ready to defend our title as Rugby World Cup champion. But before we do all that, we've got some games with this Rugby Championship. The abridged edition, obviously, uh, every year that we have a Rugby World Cup, we always get kind of the shortened version. And if any of you guys remember who won it in 2019... Nope. But uh, I've got some fixtures here. They should be popping up right over here at some point in this video. And we'll kind of go through and I will give my predictions as to who I think wins the abridged version of the rugby championship this year. Uh, obviously, a couple of injuries on the box side. We are without the services of Andre Pollard for the rugby championship as his injury has kept him out. And there's been all kinds of talk online about who's going to replace Andre Pollard. I really, really, I know they brought in Elton Yankees. We can go on about him forever. When the guy's on fire, he's awesome. When the guy is bad, he's really, really bad. And uh, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that we use this as an opportunity to give Manny Libok his proper chance at, uh, at definitely being a backup for Andre going into the Rugby World Cup. I'd had a couple of people brought up, man, why did we not bring in Johan Hussen? Man, that guy is so injury prone at this point. Don't even waste your time, man. I mean, I think he's great. He's just a little bit injury prone, I think, at this point. So as we go into this, we will look at the first weekend of fixtures, and it starts off with a big banger here. We've got newly uh, his the new coach for Australia, Eddie Jones, the crazy Tasmanian former skipper up there with England, bringing Nick White, that bastard, that terrorist Quaid Santini Cooper. Yeah, they will be at Loftus this weekend in Pretoria to take on the mighty Springboks. They have never won there, and I think that will continue on this weekend. And then just across the water there in Argentina, we've got New Zealand All Blacks taking on Argentina at Estadios Argentina there in Buenos Aires. Uh, I don't know how many of the, uh, the Jackals will be at the game. I have not popped off and asked because I know a lot of them don't actually live in Buenos Aires. They live and Rosario, which is north. So uh, we do actually have a brother of a jackal, uh, Akko Moroni. I believe his name is Matias Moroni. He is on Los Pumas uh, this year with Michael Chica. But uh, we will get the first game of the weekend. I will be going live for it. I'll be posting here shortly uh, the marker for my live broadcast. Uh, obviously, we will do a pregame video with the lineups, including that international terrorist himself, Quaid Santini Cooper. I'm sure he will be getting the start. But uh, I think that uh, it doesn't change. I think we still get the victory this weekend over, over Australia. Uh, if you look at Eddie Jones, he doesn't have the best track record jumping off the ground with teams outside of England, which he already kind of had something there when he walked in. But with Japan, he struggled a bit. And I think he will in this uh, bridge tournament. I think he'll struggle a bit. So I think we do get the victory this weekend over Australia. And across the water, uh, Fozzie the Clown, the time is ticking for him. As we all know, he will be leaving the skipper job with the All Blacks at the end of at the conclusion of the World Cup and Scott Robertson. Recent Crusaders champion, his breakdancing skills, of course, once again, uh, I think he's going to be walking into a situation that quite might even be possibly as bad as the situation was for Steve Henson in 2015 after that Rugby World Cup with the amount of guys he's about to lose. Uh, Retallick's gone. Um, Sam Whitelock's gone. 
I'm pretty sure Bo, uh, and Jordy Barrett might be splitting down. Aaron Smith's gone. Uh, God, he's going to be losing a lot after this World Cup. So, uh, But, you know, it's Razor Robinson, and I'm sure he'll do it just fine. So, like I said, first-round predictions, I've got, as Sarge, uh, I've got the Springboks and All Blacks winning. Then we go to round two with the Springboks heading to enemy territory there. Mount Smart Stadium. I can't remember a whole lot of games there. The only game I can really remember there, I, I remember Tonga and Samoa, and that was a bloodbath. I remember the All Blacks putting up over 100 on Tonga there. That is, uh, that's in South Auckland, I believe. That's where Moana Pacifica is calling home. They have really had some bad attendance issues. It kind of makes me wonder why the All Blacks are using that and not using Eaton Park. Kind of just kind of makes me wonder a bit, but um, that's going to be a fun one. I actually think we beat them at Mount Smart. I just I, I just don't see it with the All Blacks. I, I think they're going to struggle this this rugby championship. They've got a lot of question marks on their own, um, and then you've got uh, Argentina at Australia in Sydney, uh, and I think. Australia gets their first dub under Eddie Jones at that game. Then we've got the third and final round with New Zealand at Australia at Melbourne. That's going to be a nasty one. And then Argentina at, uh, at South Africa at Emirates Airline Park there in Joburg. So uh, I think New Zealand does beat Australia and Melbourne after losing to uh, us and Mount Smart. And I think we easily get a victory over uh, Argentina, which will be enough for us to secure the rugby championship. Um, it's going to be a very interesting one this year. Obviously, we know Ian Foster is done. We've got Eddie Jones trying to put something together there. Uh, Michael Hooper is once again captaining the side. He looks like he's going to rely heavily on Quade Cooper at fly half. Nick White, um, the actor of the year uh, last year with his little tap, and then he acted like his head had gotten blown off. Uh, I, that's just my prediction. But So right now I will place it as this, and hopefully I can get this graphic to go up. We will have the Springboks followed by the All Blacks, followed by Australia, followed by... Los Pumas, that's just a pretty safe bet, and I think uh, Two Cents Rugby also made that same prediction, just because I think we have the ease of schedule with the two home games. Uh, there is a final round uh, after it, but it doesn't count towards the Rugby Championship. You will get Game 2 of the Blood is Low Cup, which I think New Zealand retains, and then we will be playing at Argentina, the Springboks. That's going to be a fun one. Um, I think Michael Chica is a great coach. I think Argentina, I still say the collateral damage for Los Pumas was COVID-19. Um, I got a really good chance to, obviously, you guys saw me do an interview with uh, former head coach Mario Ledesma, and we had a huge Argentine contingency on the Jackals this year. So it got me very, very close with a lot of guys that, um, you know, have been in our rugby, you know, around rugby in Argentina for years. And it's, I really think the collateral damage in COVID was the death of, of premier level rugby for Argentina. Not having the Aguares anymore, uh, I think really, really hurts them. But they have two teams in a competition called Super Rugby Americas now. Um, and uh, they've got uh, teams from all over South Africa or all over South America, as well as a single team, the uh, the Raptors here in the U.S. joining that competition. And uh, you can find a lot of those games on YouTube. It's <sighs> the Chilean team, which is basically their national team, uh, is pretty cool to watch. They obviously kept the U one of the teams that kept the U.S. from qualifying for the World Cup. Uh, with their starting hooker Augusto Bohm, the former jackal there. Um, is it high quality rugby? It's not the best, but neither is major league rugby. Uh, it's okay to watch. It's, it's somewhat entertaining, but um, yeah, I still think that's going to be the collateral damage. So like I said, once again, I got South Africa winning the whole thing. Uh, I have Australia struggling a bit. I have, unfortunately, the Puma is not getting uh, a single victory in my opinion. 
not to say anything. It's just uh, I just don't see it happening. Um, but you know, with that being said, it is the rugby championship. It is a rugby world cup year, so anything can happen. So, like I said, later in the week, you will get my pregame video. We will go through the lineups for the visiting Wallabies and our home at home at Loftus Stadium. That's been very, very good for us in history, the Springboks, and hopefully we'll be talking about a Springbok victory after the game this weekend. So I hope everyone remains safe wherever you're at in the world. I know uh, south of the equator, the temperature's starting to drop finally. It's going to be a hot one. It is uh, July 3rd here, so me and the fiancé, yep, I got engaged, guys, uh, are going to be going and watching not fireworks, a drone show. We went and watched fireworks the other night. July 4th holiday is tomorrow here in the U.S. It is Independence Day. Most places are closed. I am off work. She works at a bank, so she is off work. So we will probably do little to nothing as possible. We might go swimming or something, but we'll see how it goes. But until then, hope, to, hope everybody's safe, like I said, and I will talk to you again very soon. Cheers, guys.